If you use charts on an iPad on stage, imagine how amazing it would be if you never had to touch your iPad and Ableton changed all your pages for you automatically. Hey, this is Will Doggett. Today I wanna to show you how you can use Ableton Live to control on song on stage so you never have to touch your iPad and Ableton will turn your pages for you. So let's get started. Okay, so to make this happen, I'm using Ableton Live on my laptop and I have OnSong on my iPad. Now I've included a link below where you can download OnSong, purchase on your iPad or iPhone. Obviously it's way better experience on the iPad because you have more real estate. And so that's what I'm gonna work with for this. Now the first thing you need to do is within OnSong, go up to your settings icon uh, go to add-ons and you wanna make sure that you have the MIDI integration purchased. I believe it's only a couple bucks, uh, but that's what unlocks the ability to make this happen. So now we need to talk about how to connect Ableton Live to OnSong. There's a lot of different ways to do it. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it wirelessly using the built-in RTP MIDI network built into every Mac. Now, I would suggest not doing this wirelessly, but actually doing it wired. You could still use the, the MIDI network to do that, just using a couple Apple adapters. I've linked to those below as well, um, so that you can have a wired connection. But my favorite way to do this is using a couple iConnectivity boxes, like the Play Audio 12, in a MIDI 4 Plus or a Play Audio 12 in a Mio 4 to do this hardwired and you never have to actually connect things. You just plug a cable in and it works. Now I've talked about that setup uh, in a previous video and like before I've linked to that in the description as well so you can see how to make that happen. So now let's talk about how to do this wirelessly. And again, I'm using the built-in RTP mini network built into every Mac. So here's how we do this. I'm gonna go in the spotlight and I'm gonna type audio MIDI setup. Uh, I've linked to the video before where I have a more in-depth walkthrough on how to use this. But just really quickly, you wanna go to window and make sure you have show MIDI studio uh, showing so that you can see the MIDI part of this. And I'm gonna use the network portion. So I'm gonna double click on network. If you're on Mojave or newer, then uh, you can go up to the menu bar to select it. And there's also, a, I believe, a globe icon um, in the section that you can click to show that on Mojave. So uh, I have MIDI network session open. And as long as my iPad is on the same MIDI network or the same Wi-Fi network, uh, and I have OnSong open, then you're gonna see your iPad name show up in the directory portion. Couple notes really quickly. I've talked about these for years, but a couple notes really quickly in this section we need to be aware of. One, we wanna make sure we have a session created created. Uh, you can uh, press the plus icon to create a session. You want to make sure it's enabled. It has a name. Uh, you can see it's enabled here. Have, make sure you have a local name, a bonjour name for your machine. I've seen this fail if you don't have a bonjour name selected. Uh, and the biggest portion here is who may connect to me. Make sure anyone is selected in that box. I also stay far, far away from the live routing section here because we're just going to do a direct connection from Ableton Live to the RTP MIDI network into OnSong. That's the connection we're going to make. So I'm going to click on Will's iPad. I'm going to hit connect and you're going to see it pop up in the participant section of this. Again, I'm doing this over Wi-Fi just because it's convenient for the sake of this training video, but I would encourage you if you're doing this in a live situation, um, make each iPad wired into a, uh, a wired network or use an iConnectivity setup uh, to make this very stable and reliable. So I've connected Ableton to OnSong. A couple settings I need to make in Ableton to make sure this is going to work. I'm going to go into Live's MIDI Preferences, Command, Comma. I'm going to go to the Link MIDI tab, and we want to go down to the Output section. I've talked about this uh, screen, this section before. I've linked to that video in the description as well. But I'm going to go to the Output settings here, and I'm going to go to Network Session 1 which is the name of that session that I created for this network. The only thing that I wanna have enabled is I wanna have track enabled. And what that means is I wanna be able to send MIDI from Ableton Live's tracks to the network into whatever's connected to the network. And in this case, OnSong running on my iPad. So we're good to go there. I'm gonna close this down. And in Ableton Live, I have a MIDI track with five MIDI clips. And on these MIDI clips, I just have different notes. So I started for song one all the way at the bottom, C minus two, and I'm just walking up five notes. So you can see this note increase by one as I go up on those clips. Um, the next thing I have to make sure I do is in the MIDI two section, I have this routed to network session one. 
and I'm gonna choose a MIDI channel. So I'm just gonna choose MIDI channel one. A couple notes here. Depending on how you're connecting to your iPad, this might say something different. If you're doing this wired or wirelessly using the network session built into your Mac, then you're gonna choose network. And if it's session one, choose that. You may have renamed your session. Make sure you choose the correct session there. And then uh, make sure you have the correct MIDI channel. Now a note on MIDI channels, if you're doing routing with say the IEC driver and you have that on MIDI channel one, then I would encourage you to choose a separate MIDI channel. Don't have them crossing paths, right? Uh, you can't cross streams. When you cross streams, it's bad as Ghostbusters has let us know in the past. So I'm just using channel one here. I've got no conflicts with anything. So I have my MIDI clips ready to go. I just chose MIDI notes. I've named them all, song one through five. They're routed uh, properly to the network. Now let's go into OnSong and make this happen. So with OnSong open, what I did is I built a set list. I've got five songs in here. Uh, this is not an OnSong tutorial, so check out their support for how to create and add songs to a set list. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go into any one of these songs, again, load it into my set list. I'm gonna hit the settings icon up here in the right-hand corner of the screen. Again, I've got the MIDI integration enabled. I'm gonna hit editors, and then we're gonna hit MIDI. So um, this is the screen where we capture MIDI information from Ableton Live. So if you've never done this before, um, like you see here, uh, you're gonna need to capture some MIDI information. You could manually go in and type in MIDI, but I think it's just as fast, or actually faster, just to send MIDI notes from Ableton Live and capture them here. So let me show you how to do that, super easy. I'm gonna go up to my first uh, note here, first clip, and I'm gonna press play, and then that's you're gonna see that show up automatically in OnSong. So this, uh, like I said in Ableton, note C minus two on channel one. That's the first note I send. Before I mess with that or assign that to anything, I'm just gonna go through and trigger the rest of my notes. So there's note two, three, four, and five. And I'm just pressing space bar after I hit each of those so that it stops. So we see we have our five notes uh, loaded into OnSong. Now what I need to do on the OnSong side is tell it what I want that note to do. So we're gonna click into our first note here and you can see there's tons and tons of options. Now, one of my favorite things about OnSong is there's tons and tons of options, which is also one of my least favorite things about OnSong because you can get lost uh, pretty easy with this. Uh, but tons and tons of options. So mess with this kind of on your own time. But we're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom here uh, where it says other. And you see we have switch section, switch song. For the sake of this, I wanna show you how you can have one MIDI clip that's assigned to your song and pull up that song. Now, we could also turn pages, do lots of different things. I'm gonna talk about this as if we've got uh, one our entire song fit on one page. So I'm gonna go into switch song here. It's gonna show me a list of my songs and I could go through and add songs to this uh, if I wanted to, but I'm gonna hit song one and now clip one is assigned to song one. So you see we've got a little check mark there, we can go back, and now we see that um, note C minus two, which was my first note, is assigned to song one. So let's go to our next one, and I'm just gonna go through and assign those two mini notes. Okay, so I've got four notes assigned to songs. I went ahead and just deleted my extra note here. And with all the selected, I'm gonna hit close, and let me show you how this works. So again, I've got songs one, two, three, and four loaded into OnSong. Um, and the way that I'm gonna work with this template is I'm gonna open up a, a new file. Over in Arrangement View, I'm ready to build my set. I'm just gonna go over to the browser and I'm gonna find that template for OnSong that I created previously. Okay, so now I'm gonna click the arrow to the left of the live project, the arrow to the left of the live set, then the arrow to the left of the MIDI track, and you're gonna see my five MIDI clips that I previously created. So I'm gonna just drop these in across the timeline. You're gonna see they load in automatically. And let's just drop them about every measure or so. And then I'll close Live's browser. And then now I just need to double check my MIDI routing. So like we talked about before, I'm gonna to go to the MIDI routing section here and let's make sure this is set to network session one and MIDI channel one. So now with this, I can press play and I want you to watch the iPad. And as I hit a clip in Ableton, it's gonna to change to that particular song uh, in OnSong. So there's song one. There's song two. And here comes song three right now.
and then finally song four. So what I like about this is this is using what I call absolute programming as opposed to relative programming. So instead of next song, previous song, I've tied a MIDI clip directly to that song. So the benefit of this is if I'm building my set in arrangement view, uh, just like I would do on stage to have lots of flexibility and freedom, let's add some locators in here. And you'll see what's really great about this now is I can jump to uh, song three. And when I press play, on song is gonna pull up that correct song. Now I could change the order of this live on the fly, which is one of the things I love about our range review. Let's jump back to song one, press play, and as soon as song one starts, um, on song is gonna pull up the correct song. So using Ableton Live and OnSong on your iPad gives you complete freedom and flexibility when you're performing on stage. Again, jump anywhere in your song, your chart will follow. Jump anywhere in your set to any song and your chart will follow. So if you wanna learn um, how to control more things with Ableton Live, maybe control your lights, your lyrics, video, then I wanna encourage you to head to fromstudiostage.com where you have tons of courses, not on just using Ableton Live for tracks, but using Ableton Live to control almost anything. And you're gonna learn the two kind of core pieces of knowledge on how to literally walk onto any stage in the world and control almost anything. So head to fromcosage.com. You can start a free seven day trial, which is going to give you access to all of that content. Thanks so much for watching this. See you guys next week. Take care, everybody. Bye.